being able to let your hair loose and not have to wear restrictive ties or anything that doesn't make you feel like the true you you are within, it's part of growth. I started just saying, no, I'm going to wear my look is a little bit more rustic, eclectic, hippie, happy, <laughs> life coach, I don't know, boho Jesus, whatever it is that I am. You're not a flannel yeah. in a Patagonia kind of bitch. No, no. I'm not. <laughs> That's why we've always... Hey dolls, welcome to The Gaily Dose, a family of queer people who have fun, elevated conversation to build a deeper sense of community in our LGBTQ world. Check us out at thegailydose.com or at the Gaily Dose Pod on all social media. Girl, you better come get your Gaily Dose. Welcome to The Gaily Dose. This is Helen Lucero de Magalski. As always, it is me, Dante Donis Rhodes. Hi, this is Daniel Martini. And as you know, this episode is brought to you by AHF, where you can get all of your gay healthcare needs met, regardless of your ability to pay. And dolls, if you are not following us online or on our socials, please do so. And please like, comment, and subscribe. If you like what you're seeing and you enjoy this content and you want more of it, please help us out by liking, following, and commenting below. Thank you so much, boys. We um, are so excited today. We have a very exciting episode, a dose of self-improvement with Bernardo Luvo. So Hello. we are super excited to talk to our very good friend. <laughs> yes, um, I'm going to ask you, ladies, how um, how's it been? Anything new? Alexa, play Work by Rihanna. This has probably <laughs> been the busiest period of my life. Like, I literally have no free time at all. But I just, um, I have a professional coach now. Professional work coach is, like, helping me, like, figure out, like, what I like about life and how, to, how does that relate to work, how to balance it all out. I'm reading a new book called Free to Focus, which plays on those same ideas too. So I want to start navigating work a lot more efficiently because honey, right now it's like booked and busy. Well, hey, it's first time, first time you've had to pay taxes, which means you're making good money, which well, is great. Yeah, the government yeah. doesn't need any more of my damn money, yeah, bitch. Give me some back. Hey, I'm just celebrating. <laughs> Being young and making some good money is, is great. Yes, it is. I'm proud of myself. How about you? Um, so I sold my condo and I it moved and I am... Um, um, renovating, so that's great. Um, there's a lot of great things on the horizon. Yes. Um, this last week has been a little tough. One of my great friends from high school uh, passed away on Friday, so that has been um, a very emotional journey. So um, just I just want to give Ashley Boer, wherever you're watching this from, um, mm -hmm. thank you. I love you. You've changed my life forever. And... Um, and yeah, and I'm so glad to be back with the family. Yeah, we're yeah. excited to have the doses you. The have it have you back, honey. Exactly. And, and then uh, what's new with you, Miss Thing? My updates are uh, my middle daughter is uh, ju junior prom. Whoa. So it's the whole, the dress has to match this, has to the nails and Hair. that. And it's a thing. I and live for prom dresses. I mean. I can, I can, you probably have one. Yeah. Oh my God, I have two. <laughs> is it sequined? Um, it's not. But what's so sweet is like all the moms That's want me to sequined. join them so we can go to the photography shoot. They'll have the gay dad with them. It'll be cute. Um, <laughs> and the youngest is doing a play and a super excited musical. So just dad, father, kid stuff. And you're going to Rome too. Europe. Yeah, we just booked her. We just booked flights for Europe for me to take the girls. I've always wanted yeah, to take them to Rome and We're just going to Rome Paris. with the girls. Hey, I did it with all my, my flight miles that I've earned you since fly the lot to pandemic. Get those yeah, well... <laughs> You know what? We're not flying as much anymore. <laughs> so got to enjoy it while you have it, right? Let me yeah. tell you, honey. Oh, no, that's right. All right, dolls. So we're going to head right in to meet Mr. Bernardo after Queer and Events. Yes. Oh, girl, turn that down. Queer and Events is on. Hi, dolls, and welcome to another segment of Queer and Events. As always, this segment is sponsored by Joining Heart. Uh, this organization is dedicated to making a tremendous difference in the gay community. Join the family and the fight at joininghearts.org. Yes, honey. So, yes, dolls, honey. let's get into some queer events, shall we? Yes. What is going on? So, I mean, girl. We've got war. We've got famine. We've got <laughs> yeah, we do. my new nails. Pestilence. I mean, I can't take it all. <laughs> war, famine. <laughs> my new nails. I love you so much. <laughs> so. Did you say something? Child, this week in the news, everyone's probably heard about it if you haven't get into it. Elon Musk last week bought Twitter for Try three, to. No, he bought a share, a large share, a 9% share, share in Twitter, the largest share of anyone in the company right now at the amount of $3 billion. Damn. Um, yeah. And 
After doing so, the shareholder, the board was like, we're going to invite him to be on our board of directors, so on and so forth, right? Uh-huh. A few days passed, and everyone's like, what is he going to do? And then he releases this, like, jarring statement, like, I have no interest in being your board of directors. I don't think the company's being ran right. And I was like, oh, what the fuck is really going on? Then, guess what happens, bitch? Jack, who is the CEO of the company, is like, I also do not like our board. The board has been a big area of dysfunction for our company. So Elon Musk doubles back and goes, actually, then I want to buy the entire company and take it private. So in response, this messy girl, corporate mess, they were like, we're going to implement a poison pill. So we're going to allow for a period of time the current shareholders to buy more and more stakes in the company at a lower price, which would dilute Elon, Elon's current sale and make it less appetizing for him to buy a company because it'd be devaluing the company. Well, now Elon doubling back again is now saying that he's going to go to shareholders directly to buy stocks from them so that they're not losing any money. It's a big mess, girl. It's so, fascinating. So I think at the last time I checked, he was gonna he was gonna pay each stockholder fifty four dollars a share. Yep, that would total forty six billion dollars, uh-huh. which is crazy. Forbes and, said that they weren't even worth it. wasn't even, the, the company wasn't even worth that much. And what's the large the larger conversation to have is now like they're talking about where his money come from. He would to take that because he doesn't have that much liquid capital. capital. Yeah. he would have to sell stakes in Tesla to do it. So it's like, what about Twitter? Well, he's got is that advertising? But he, I ain't doing nothing with that now, shall? But my thing is this, <laughs> what about this company is that advertising where he'd be putting that much on the line to take the hell? Like, there's something must be some secret sauce we don't know about. Well, I think that you can see what Twitter has done over the, definitely during the pandemic. They have definitely a left leaning um, platform. And if you, I remember when accounts would get completely shut off. If you even mention the word like uh, lab leak theory about the coronavirus. And now people are like, hey, it could be a possibility. But where four months ago, you you would say anything in regards to COVID and you would be, you know, and now CNN, MSNBC, Washington Post, now they all get to say it and everything's fine. But Twitter is not like cutting but it. But I think they're so different I mediums. They're different mediums though. I, well, but... I do but understand they're not, that they're they're not supposed to be a media. They're supposed to be a, a, a free speech platform where anybody can get involved. Well, I don't know if I don't know if that's in their brain message and there's a free speech platform. I think that's what maybe someone wants it to be. Yeah, but I think that's what, and, that's, and that's and that's what's that's interesting what is that he may have just figured out that that's it's extremely valuable to control how valuable it is to control the media. And if you think about it, um, some of the worst things in the history of the world have been propagated when people have controlled the media and the specific messages. Whether you're in Russia, whether you're in China, and maybe he just feels strongly that it should be run a certain way. I don't know whether well, he's think always it's, been a proponent of like helping the masses. He's a libertarian though, because he's, he's, he's not he allowed by any means he allowed um, Starlink to be used in. Ukraine when Russia was like attacking their internet servers which was like a major move to uh-huh. do because yeah. it was like a, you have a private company taking stake in like an international conflict but you've got the right propping his up propping him up like some martyr and then you've got the left that's trying to do this character assassination which I always who's find who's trying to assassinate his character uh, uh, mainstream media MSNBC CNN all, all of the people are like well, what's he doing it for he's trying to steal free speech he's trying to he's trying to I haven't seen this I think he's trying to look it. harder because it's there. there okay okay so now that we've got Elon Musk in 50, 46 billion dollars I mean can't you cure like world hunger with that anyways right. um, <laughs> so weird um, let's <laughs> damn to, girl yeah God damn. yeah no I mean it would I mean it is it is interesting it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out it's so it's so dramatic yeah so dramatic um, so I say cool. buy it right cop it I um okay so my 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 piece so this is a little bit about the recent legislation <laughs> that we've gone through <laughs> my piece my piece my piece of news um the the way, hold on, let's get helmet. What do you have to? What's going on in your world? So there's a couple of things. So uh, marriage. So there's been a, Tennessee. Um, there was a proposal put together to kind of uh, push marriage to just be common law marriage from the state because there should be a difference between state and and church. and church and not be an official marriage. And of course, that's kind of silly because you can get into then potentially, you know young people being married at very young ages because they've cohabitated with someone, whatever. But the real issue is that you have um, attempts being made this year on um, anti-abortion, right, where it's kind of increased. And this year, there's a record number, 312, I think, uh, legislative pieces that have been brought forward that are anti-LGBTQ. Um, I think like 105 of them are anti-trans, and 27 of them have been put in a law, which is the worst year in a long time Girl, it's for LGBTQ. So you kind of have this kind of like concerning, right, feeling within um, 
within places of power. How can it be the worst year when the Democrats operate the legislative, the executive, and the judicial? Because it's, I will say it's not that black and white because a lot of these it laws, let me, let, me tell you, let me tell you, let me explain it to you on a different level. So a lot of the laws that are being passed are not being passed on the federal level. Yes, right same. now, Democrats have the federal government and not even by a grasp. We barely have the House. We, yeah, don't, right. we don't have, and right. we barely have the Senate. The Supreme but, Court Justice won it by 53 to 47. Exactly. So what you're seeing, though, is on the state level, you have these states who have realized they have lost their federal control because they, they don't have the senators in the House. In so what's happening now in these individual states even Georgia hell, where there aren't these like overwhelming Democrat or liberal places because you have an entire state of people, uh -huh. you're seeing the implementation of conservative law and conservative ideology. Like one thing right now when the economy is in a decent place, you see this introduction of a lot of what, what's the word to use? I'm like, like li not liberal, um, social issues. You think the incorporation of social issues. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So because the economy is doing what it's doing, it's fine. We've reached a stable place. It's like, let's talk about gay marriage because when they passed gay marriage, we were coming on like the hills of coming out of a recession. So it's like, let's, that's whatever. Let's let them have that. We're trying to fix the economy. Now that that shit is fine, every little thing that's irritated them for the past 10 years, they're able to introduce because there's nothing else to talk about. Gun laws, not needing a license to carry in Georgia anymore. Tennessee, don't, I mean, Florida, don't say gay. Now they're saying math is making kids gay. All this this little shit that like they have not had the time or people to listen to them about for so long, they're not doing it. Yeah. And I mean, even to piss you off a little bit, when Trump was in office, he did a lot of empowering of the far right and doing this kind of ideas that are, this is okay. You, it's not fine. Like I know they're telling you to embrace this gay stuff, this trans stuff, this black stuff. It's okay to not embrace it. Own that you don't like it. Be loud about it. It will get passed. And that is what's happening. You have the far right taking the Republican Party by storm. Because I don't think all Republicans are bad, but I do think you see this ideology that is so far right and for, so far right leaning becoming the mainstream thing that is becoming the face of the Republican Party. Because yeah. the average Republican, I'm telling you, doesn't hate the average, gay people. The average Republican but does the not The ones hate. that are getting the most attention and the ones that are getting laws passed now are the ones that do. Yeah. And they're not doing enough to stop and that's, that. And that's what's scary is that I don't, I think most, most Republicans don't really care that much, but the ones that do are being effective. And, and they've, they've taken level, the party by hold. It just, it's not a good vibe. It's just not good for the country. It's not good for our kind. Go back to being fiscally conservative because there's other shit y'all got some weird twisted ideas on. But do you think that they will ever give like gay marriage, gay adoption, abortion? Like, I mean, how many decades can we talk about? We, we're going to keep abortion. talking about it until like, until we get to it. We thought when we had Roe versus Wade, like, just, we thought I that was the end of it. I don't understand how we, we always come back to like, 12 week abortion. Yeah, it's like we've it's, been talking, we have, we have marched for but it's, that's it's, their party. It's, it's, it's decades. Like, that's it's really their party. because at the end of the day, I really do believe this. I believe that the religious right has always lived off of fear and a fierce totally. dedication to that way above all people else. People are hijacking your life. And so people are basically, they, they feel like if you do these things that we are, we are corrupting children in the world, it's very scary to be led by love. And really being led by love is accepting the fact that in humans, we have gay people, we have trans people. Let's accept and embrace them and start religion from there. But no, we need to go back to these old manuscripts and these very bigoted, terrible views there are of people women. Who, where fear are, is yes, and, like, there, and there are people the who are willing to listen. Yeah. yeah, and it's silly because you know what? Be fiscally conservative, but love gays. Oh. You know, like... Um, and and there's not an intersection there. There isn't right. right now. And I'm telling you, as much as people don't want to admit it, that was the worst part of him taking office was people who were always wacky like him, feeling like they can find, they see themselves so they can be loud about their twisted ideas. Because like the majority of the Republican Party would not be having any of these conversations five, six years ago before he got elected. I promise you. But yeah. Trump was like always no, kind of like, what do you always before he, like before, down with the gays? Before he got into office. He got, you, he, this is what happened. He got into office and realized the only way he was going to get to where he needed to go was by enabling the far right because uh -huh. the average American is like, who's this nut from reality TV? I just remember president. him on The Apprentice yes. and he would have like yeah. all like the gay Donald yeah. Trump on TV versus Donald Trump as president, two different people. He was driven by ego. He realized the people that were going to support him Absolutely. were the nuts. And now the nuts have taken taken the control of the entire party. Like Marjorie Taylor Greene is now someone who is like living large. Is and that the national, long The crazy lady from Georgia. Crazy. She would not have, 10 years ago, that lady would not have gotten elected. But after Trump's regime yeah. took office, <laughs> like that, are like now like a fucking, she's a senator. I mean, a, um, a representative. Yeah. Craziness, yeah. but well, you know. Do we have some other news? Okay, so <laughs> let's move on to, let's move on to transportation. So we have got right now, I think that what the, F, the FEC has, now allowed passports to um, have um, 
a female, a male, and then a, a third category, which is um, X, gender and X. Yes. And that will be inclusive of uh, the, the trans community. So non-binary. Will, yeah. Not, so non-binary, queer, uh, yep. transgendered. So if you are, you know, going to the airport and you don't want to show, you know, your male's driver's license or you're identifying with it, but, you know, the, all the logistics and the paperwork aren't matching up, this is no longer requiring you to do that. Yeah. The passport says X for a reason and you're not going to get hassled or have to go through extra scrutiny at the airport for TSA. So what do you guys think about X? Like, have we, are we, is this, is this good? How do we get other countries to kind of adopt this? One thing I've always not understood since I've been like a kid, is like, I call it identity politics. Like why people get so hung up on how others identify and how others feel empowered. Right? It doesn't why make sense to me. Why do you care? care so much. Why do so, like, you care? Get out of my fact business. that like it is Jesus such a... Your son like, is doing heroin. But the Bible doesn't even talk about... It. The Bible Bigger doesn't even talk about gender on. in that way. Like the Bible doesn't have to find gender know, in this I way know, that we're like tr- someone being transgender is against what you've been taught. It's I would lay with another man. That's not even... That wasn't even... But at least it's in the Bible. There's nothing about trans women in the Bible at all. And what's ridiculous to me is that why is it such a big deal that people want to identify the way they want to? If you know in your heart that you're a woman, why does that bother me at all? It doesn't, it shouldn't. Yes. It has nothing to do with my day-to-day life. I will yeah. say, it does I, not. I'm excited because here you have the converse. So now you have at the national level, the Biden administration's doing what they can for us, right? So you've got this move, you've got the X, right? You've got um, education now that's been pushed out from for trans youth. Um, so we're still have, we're in a space that allow it. Yep. Well, yes. And you've got over 200, over 200 LGBTQ people placed into places of, of authority Which and is responsibility. Major. It is. So you have what they can do for our kind that administration is doing. You and know again, what was being highlighted? And I, this is something I'm really big in the government and politics. I've always thought, since I learned this in the fifth grade about the Ten Amendments, that states' rights it was like the demise of us functioning as a country efficiently. And now you're seeing where they're implementing these national, federal laws that are being like backtracked by like local legislation because states' rights and like the power of the local but government. Every administration comes in and just does an executive order. Well, it's like an executive order, but it's more than that. But the thing is, if you look at other countries, they don't have this much. But this is the thing. But you don't have that. goes back to. But what is that? In other countries, you don't have this confusion of like what's legal, what's not illegal. Like right now, the majority of the country would support cannabis being legal everywhere. But why is smoking weed still getting you five to ten years? But this is the thing. So you have certain states where it's legal, then other states where it's not. And municipalities within states where like right now, federally, in some places, it's okay to have weed, right? But then in Georgia, it's illegal. But then like in the city of Atlanta, it's this. And then in Gwinnett County, it's that. It's like too confusing and too. That's why like when COVID happened, it was so hard to do a shutdown because it's like, well, the government is a, 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 a federal a mandate. Mask, a Girl, it's a federal oh, yeah. mandate, but then the state says you don't have to. But then the city of Atlanta is like, yeah, yeah you do. We're level two. It's like, oh, what is? <laughs> but no, then you get a TSA, they let you know, put the thing off. Exactly. Airport, yeah. Yeah. Put the back on. Literally, we are trying to figure ourselves out as a country. Is the my observation, right? And it's it's just scary to me on some levels that we think that like, what are you going to do? Put us all back in closets? Yeah, girl. Um, they would love you know, it. Put us in a little Do you think that that is any Republicans? I mean, just for like, for like the That's what they say. But babe, I, I'm telling you, that's I their think platform. I'm going to about people I'm like my sh- dad. He doesn't give I'm, a fuck I'm gonna about share with and I'm, People I'm like gonna, dad are not the problem. Yeah. Right now, which worse, like I told you, after Donald Trump became president, a Republican president, the party has to back up their president. Yeah. And the president's agenda was based off of a lot of far right wing ideology. So what happened? The Republican Party had to start supporting these crazy right wing ideologists. That was why people like Governor Ron DeSantis, who are getting the endorsements from people like Donald Trump, are coming on stage and saying outlandish well, bullshit. What about Governor Abbott that's well, and a lot of these them, migrants from Texas to do, Washington, yeah. D.C.? But, but a lot of that was... Um, really encouraged by the pandemic, okay? Because people really sat and they thought what's wrong and how they're gonna do things. And if you are going you through- You don't want them sitting. If you're going through, well, and you go through and you're just taught what you're taught and you go to church and you hear those things. I can tell you right now, we think it's that far away. I have a very close family member that literally is still like, you have to repent and change your ways or it's not gonna go well for you. Oh. And when you think, I'm just one person. You're going there to hell, girl. people out there that are, still have these views that we can somehow not be mm-hmm. who we are. Just and ask for forgiveness. I'm, I'm not gonna, uh, there's, I don't, I'm, I'm not sorry about who I am. Yeah. Period. It's you a are. place. Well, 
Sauce, I think that's a wrap. <laughs> a um, wrap Join us next time uh, for another fun, thrilling episode, a segment of Queer Events. We love you. Yes. Mwah, we'll see you next time. We know it took some time, but we got your human heart on. Hey guys, this week's heart on is no one other than Lady Gaga. Yes, we love Lady Gaga. You know, she is someone that resonates within my soul because I would never forget, I'm someone who's like a little bit younger. So like she came of age when I was already coming of age. Right. I would never forget when she released her paparazzi music video when she went to the Amazing, AMA, yes. And I was like, oh, I think I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> but she was such like a um, trailblazer for people being different. And I think for a long time, we in the queer community have been made to feel different. So seeing someone be different on such a large global platform has been like nothing but inspiring since the beginning of her career. Yes, absolutely. And I, I think the more at the beginning we have a tendency to think that anyone that makes it is just lucky yeah. and there's no lucky there's she worked her butt off yes. and you know I found out that she used to sing at every New York little sketchy bar yeah. there was <laughs> and you know decided to take on the the Lady Gaga journey and go against all the bullying that she experienced growing up, the horrendous bullying that she experienced that she's so outspoken about. Yeah. So I think she's for sure a role model on how we can turn things around if we are intentional and uh, we allow ourselves to shine through. And um, but yeah, I love it's Lady Gaga. Amazing, and then like even like in her art and her expression, like she always takes it to a place where you're not expecting it. To yes. Go. So like when she released her jazz album with Tony Bennett, that was like I love that. So yes. amazing. And then they did another one this past year. Um, it was Love for Sale. Was so amazing and beautiful. Like I always was so impressed by her. I love that. I love that album. I love what she did. Obviously, when it comes to fashion, she's. Oh. <sighs> freaking icon she, eats it up every she does <laughs> and then some and something that i love that i think is important to bring forward is uh recently i saw online somewhere that she had stopped she showed several clips of her stopping whatever it was that she was doing to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. So it was at one point at an award ceremony where she yes, took an older lady. Yeah, because, um, it was. Um, I think it was SZA. She was, was going it? up on stage. And she, oh yes. She had, like broke her leg and she like was she had a long. She cut, yes. She helped her like. Get she it helped her get up. Somebody else. There was an older lady uh, who was Liza Minnelli. Liza Minnelli. Oh, that was such a beautiful it was moment that was touching for yes. me to see Liza Minnelli saying to her she's like I got you and Liza Minnelli said I know you got me because yeah, she's such a kind person so I think all of the 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 the, the amazing um light that we see through her music and the expression of her fashion it's only wrapped up in an incredible personality yes. that goes beyond that right that energy that truly fills that room and that makes you not able to get enough gaga. <laughs> too much gaga. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. oh, well, thank you for tuning in for another segment of Human Heart On on here on The Gaily Dose and come back next week for more. Yes. Let's zoom into that doll and double click. Hey dolls. I am so excited to talk to you this week like I am every week. Sometimes about things that are small and simple and sometimes things that are complex. I think this one's a little bit more complex. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the sort of divergent forces of fear and love. I feel like these two things a lot of times in our world are some of the most powerful motivators for our activity and actions. When I was a dad teaching my young children not to uh, hurt themselves, for example, um, you might, um, you know, they're going to reach for the electric socket and you kind of slap your daughter's hand. So she would learn that this was bad. And she was afraid to touch it. And that was a good thing for a two-year-old, right? You had a little fear to learn. And fear can be a great motivator for us in a lot of areas um, in our safety, um, in terms of making sure that you get up in the morning to go to work because you do want that paycheck and you need that paycheck to survive. I feel like fear is a number one sort of level for a lot of things in life. But it also can be a great hinderer sometimes to the development 
and the progress that we need as people, not only as a queer society, but as a human society. And so you see a lot of times a great desire by some of our humankind towards things that are very fear-based. If you look within your own self, that can sometimes show up in ways you might speak to yourself when you're going to work out, trying to motivate yourself, you know? You may call yourself bad names, or you might really be stuck on not moving a boulder in your life because you just are afraid of the consequences. The flip side of fear, the most opposite concept I can think of, is indeed love. And love is a much more refined way of getting things done. It's not the way that we often first love. First, it depends. Some children can be extremely loving and very clear. But oftentimes, love is something that you sort of learn to get past your selfishness, learn to get past the fear that you have of maybe stepping outside and doing something that's different or awkward or new. And that's really hard to do. It's really hard to do in your own self sometimes, to love yourself enough to do something. Sometimes it's hard to do because the fear of something has you so convinced that if you take a step and do something risky, that you might fail. Um, and you have to believe that love is big enough to take a risk, that love is big enough to make anything possible. I think that's very important for us as we think about your own personal life, and I also think of our collective. I think what we often fail to realize is that we as a collective have a consciousness. We are manifesting as a humanity our future. And there are a lot of forces I feel like in this time, in this world, that are pushing people towards fear. You just need to remember that that's the most important time to choose love. Love for yourself when you're most afraid. Love for each other when we're afraid of the outcome for us all. And I know there's a lot of people that are torn about war that's going on in the world, about economics, about politics. And I just want to be clear, being filled with love doesn't mean that you're weak. In fact, it means you have to be strategic. Being full of love for yourself means you have to be strategic with the choices you're making, the friends you take, the things that you're reading, how you treat your brain. And so I just encourage you to realize that oftentimes you may find yourself defaulting to fear in certain parts of your life. And you really need to take a step back and try to pursue the things that are loving. And when you can, try to lead others in love. Help others see um, that there are various ways to approach a thing not everyone is going to be welcome to it, but I do think that that is one of the beautiful things that we can do as members of the community. A Dose of Self-Improvement with Bernardo Laveau. Hey dolls, we are so excited today to welcome and introduce to you Bernardo Luvo, our very yeah. good friend. Welcome, thank you, thank you guys. Yeah. So excited to be here. Absolutely, Bernardo is actually a longtime friend and actually I think the longest friend with Daniel um, here in yes. the group. <laughs> and we were in Greece together last year, had a fantastic time, and I really Amazing. watched Bernardo yes. evolve as a human. Um, and I was super excited about having him come on and sharing a little bit about his passion for um, evolution and self-improvement. So you want to tell the dolls a little bit about yourself? Yes, of course. Thank you so much, Helmut, and so excited to be here. It's uh, really been a, it's been a journey and very much uh, I was part of the corporate world, was part of several corporate boards and was truly just working my way up the ladder and at one point I realized that that wasn't my journey any longer and so I became a life coach I was already coaching and developing managing but I wanted to take it into a different direction in a direction that had to do more with body mind soul and really getting to the root cause of each issues and seeing the light and the value that we can bring when we are intentional, consistent, and practical about our approach to life. So 
that's really the journey that I've been in right now. It's about helping others become the chief executive officer of their life oh, and of their purpose. <laughs> good, sure good. Thank you, the <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, you, yes. and you know, for our, I've seen you. You have evolved into a very unique <clears throat> and wonderful human. But I think that was a journey for you because I remember when we kind of first became friends. You liked the corporate and sort of doing yes. what was expected. Yeah. Well, I think what changed for sure. And um, I think as you, the person that I was ten years ago is completely different than the person that I am today, and it has a lot to do with shifting from the personal growth that I had originally that was based more on how can I achieve more in the workplace mm -hmm. and really taking that growth more into how I can achieve a higher uh, lie, a, a higher, uh, how can I maximize my human experience? So I think taking it that much farther started making an impact on me and others. And I, it really has to do much more with that. It's about intention. It's about not letting, not just focusing on the skill sets and the theory, but also in understanding how do you achieve your purpose here on this earth, mm -hmm. and what are the what are some things that you can do today to give yourself the power you have within? Yeah, which is not easy to do because so much of the system is built for <laughs> oh, in a good way. <laughs> okay. yeah. Okay. For us to achieve right okay. certain yeah. things that are successful, mm -hmm. and then to take a step back and say, hey, wait, I want to live the best life. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily yeah. mean you follow that road anymore. Yeah, not you yes. have to be unique to yourself. I think that's something a lot of people get caught up in, like yeah. growing up in the world, especially in America, you have the American dream. Yes. It's like you graduate uh -huh. high school, go to college, get your job, Absolutely. buy your house, yes. get promotion. <laughs> and it's like at some point, what, where have you lost yourself? And like, what is genuinely making you happy? Like when you walk into work, are you like smiling in the ear because you're excited about what you're doing or because you're like putting on a get face and trying to get that from what you're trying to impress your boss? It's gonna get to like second guess yourself, like is this what's really making me happy? Mm -hmm. And is this my purpose in life? And if it isn't, how can I get to my purpose in life? Right. And also thinking about uh, yourself with from a different lens, right? You're more than just your job. You're more than just th that part of who you, the, of your life. And when you start approaching life, it, with giving it your 150%, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be predictable. And you, but if you're willing to take a lot of wrong turns, make mistakes fell forward and start focusing on how you can take those accidental mm -hmm. uh, journeys that you take on and really take all that and build the new you, the improved you, you can propel forward because those every little bit, everything that I learned in the corporate world helps me in different ways today. Mm -hmm. The management, the, the boards, the, the things that I enjoy and the things that I didn't enjoy. So that can be utilized by anybody, right? And also when you connect with people uh, in, through their hearts and not just see them as a client and uh, as what they can I can get from them you really make a difference you can make a difference yeah. so talk about all these differences and like how you've ended up from point A to point B what influences did you pick up along those way and like who were some of the people who kind of led you to this new part of your life sure uh, well I love that yes <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of I one of the things that that I love was going to seminars and master classes and just mm -hmm. learning. And I went to a Tony Robbins seminar nice. for I think yes. six days. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It's the real deal. It was. That's cool. I remember anyone who went. Well. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it was life changing. Yes. It's. It's. Uh, and that's just one of the 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 the, the shift. The moments that I consider made shift in my life, mm -hmm. uh, that and really changing my environment, my friendships, my circles, and not allowing, uh, the biggest part is really not allowing 
somebody else's perception of what you should be accomplishing and how you should be doing your life affect yours. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and really, I, as I started digging deeper, I saw that I could help myself um, a lot and I could help others around me and I could also help everything around my life. My relationship with my husband, our company, our my coaching business, every aspect of it, right? And not no longer see it as just a section of my life. It's your whole life, it's like a summative whole. Yeah, so it's kind of a global analysis, a global mind, a global approach um, to that. it. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> We've talked about your journey from the corporate sector to now your own kind of entrepreneurship with you and your husband. So yeah. what I wanted to ask you is also adults, I have known him for, for a long time. For, <laughs> for a very long time. The nicest, most genuine person in the world. So giving. I mean, just the shirt off your back, it's like his door is always open. And I wanted to ask you how important family and friends have been to you along your journey. Because I know that yeah. you and Brady are just the absolute best couple in the world. Like, what Aww. is that support system so like? So sweet. <laughs> well, I am lucky to have an incredible husband. And um, I think with our relationship, we both came ready for something a little bit more elevated than what we had in the past. We both had prior engagements, we both had accomplished a lot in some ways and not given ourselves enough credit in others. And when we came together, we were no BS. It was all less, are you in it to win it or not? Yeah. And we both were really into it. And we had a few rules, like always treating each other with love and respect, always keeping what this relationship means to us and no one else top of mind. And when you stop worrying so much about what others think and you send imposter syndrome away and you focus on your abilities and what you can bring to the table in your relationship, it really is magical, you know. But also, I, I'm lucky. I it's I have a great husband that loves me and I adore him. And we work as a team. We are. It's never. I I hear sometimes people talking about how they're happy that their partner is gone for several days or weeks or months. <laughs> yes, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, like no. do you like him a lot? Like, like, wait, what? what I'm like, I'm like, this is love. But I can tell you, like, for that relationship, I can give you one of something that is really, really been helpful for anybody because I feel like those little nudges can help. <laughs> we practice a Hawaiian practice, uh, a Hawaiian uh, ritual, a spiritual ritual, uh, where you say to each other, I am sorry, please forgive me, I love you, and thank you. And it doesn't have to be in that order, it's just a Hawaiian spiritual practice, uh -huh. but it's just one of many, many, many things that we have taken over the years, right? Yeah, it yeah. kind of goes back to that intentionality you have with like your yeah. life, it kind of plays into relationships. A lot of people try to become autonomous in relationships, but like you lose that connectedness in trying to become autonomous. You have to continue to be intentional. Right. Like remind yourself why you're in this and why you found love with that person to start with, and that's how you stay strong, mm -hmm. I'd well, say. And I think that you guys really have this kind of secret formula figured out where you are very active and you are very present but then you do we were talking like in the a block kind of off camera yeah that you do make sure you really do like spend time retreat you know go see family and family uh nephews that you get to spend time with just to kind of be in that world and then to kind of take a break and be out of it right and not get burned out i mm -hmm. think that's you know how do you guys what, schedule that yes for sure well it's a challenge sometimes <laughs> um i learned i think a long time ago when i was in, in the board for the lgbtq pride team and working in partnership with a few organizations and i would take my husband to several events and uh, a few years ago and we realized i realized that this, this was a lot for him mm -hmm. and for me so now i don't say yes to everything i've learned to say no i can't because i don't want to go to three i don't want to be part of three events mm -hmm. and not be present and just uh you know wet my 
lips in the champagne flute, I want to be able to <laughs> enjoy the glass, right? right. Yeah. So I think being like you were, like we were talking about it, more intentional, more present, more authentic, and say no. It's uh, it's totally okay to say I can do it. I just can't do so much the power today. Is a very beautiful. Yeah, yes. yes. it's not a weakness. It really is. I mean, it saves you time, energy. Mm. Your emotional mindset. It's I mean, just the power boundaries. of no is like in business and personal life. It's yes. it's so important and not like a rude no. Just like I, I will not be able to make that. I cannot accomplish. Yes, that. you know what I'm saying. Yes, yes, yes. One yes, thing yes, that's yes, yes. about saying no to people to make it softer is you. Sometimes a lot of people can say, "I can't do it because of this reason." You can kind of turn it on themselves and like, "I can't do this because I know I wouldn't be proper help to you if I came to this, if I did this, so that they're not always let down." Because sometimes people can take it personally, but it's like this is more about you than it is even about me. Yeah. I won't be able to serve the way I need yeah. to if I come there. And also if you think about that a little deeper, um, the people that will get upset with you saying no mm -hmm. because you have to achieve a goal or you have to part, you know, part, go be part of a commitment, mm -hmm. in my book, may not be the right fit for me in my life. Yeah, I need you know, their intention. Yes, I need people that are flexible, that are loving. My VIP friends are people that I love, that I can say anything, I can say uh, anything that comes to mind. I don't have to be perfect. And I give a lot to them and they give me a lot. Yeah. So I think there's this also, just like a relationship, yeah. you have to be continuously assessing and seeing if, it is good for you guys because yeah. you don't want to be with somebody just because you made a commitment. It should be something that you enjoy, that you that you that you really partake. You're compelled uh, to do yes. that. Yes, and also the grass isn't always greener. I think in the gay community, totally. there's this big misconception that I'm going to not do speak with this person, and then somebody that's just perfect is going to show up. <laughs> and it's like, how do you? How about you find? all the beautiful qualities qualities that your partner has and not focus on all the opportunities. Yep. And if you focus on what's good, you will see, just like an optimist always gets more done in life, it's just the way it is, yep. your brain functions better. Same thing happens in relationships. Is If you control yourself and think before you speak and don't blurt emotional comments, <laughs> You save yourself a lot. So um, we hardly ever fight. We have communication. We have discussions. But I don't just go and start going crazy. I just, I'll walk away. I'll make my notes. Your guys' really awkward. It's like both of you just like walk out of the room and come back and then like hug them. Yes. That's so but no one even threw anything. What am I doing? Wrong? No one even threw anything. No so this is no real housewife moment. What's so great about it? What's so great about right? it? Though, as, as you talk about this, is that it's not only a coming into yourself. Right? Mm. As your partner is doing the same thing, you come into each other in a more clear way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you can think, think. You can become your own selves that yeah. are yes. unapologetically who the two of you are together. Um, I'm going to make an obvious statement, but I have, I have enjoyed watching you not only evolve into a more authentic you. Mm -hmm. But also even like what you wear, your garb, your your Jesus hair, your, you are, you, you, I just yeah, think no. you look like, fabulous. They call me Boho Jesus in Fire Island, oh, so Boho I take Jesus. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you look fantastic. And Thank you. you, and you out. It's, it's just part of something that's going on inside too, which I think is remarkable. I cannot wait Thank for you, you to read, write a book, Law of Laveau. Uh, Law of Laveau. Law, Law by Laveau, I'm it's reading so it. Well, the external, it's, uh, I think, a reflection of what I went through. And it's, I think when you're external, you know, being able to let your hair loose and not have to wear restrictive ties or anything that doesn't make you feel like the true you you are within, it's part of growth for me. And I knew how to play the game in the corporate world. I knew what to say. I knew how to keep my family affairs separate. I knew how to change the subject and talk about golf. All the things that you <laughs> are like, oh yeah. my gosh, you just do it enough that you learn. But I think when you start, I started just saying, no, I'm going to wear my look is a little bit more 
rustic, eclectic, hippie, happy, <laughs> life coach, I don't know, <laughs> boho Jesus, whatever it is that I am. But in finding yeah, that... A and a Patagonia kind of bitch. No, I'm not. <laughs> That's why we've always just kind of... Like, you know, yeah. that, that creativity yeah. is yeah. in a lot of, of us in the queer community, yeah. right? Yes, I and, love it. And I think... I think a lot of people, more than you may know, are mm. looking at you. I've often said that to some of our guests, but especially you and, and Brady have taken a Aww. position of leadership in the community by basically being willing to be present and open mm. and putting your relationship out there. And we don't have a lot of great relationships to mm. look up to. Mm. There's a lot of 20-somethings and 30-somethings that are looking at, at you all and taking notes. So well, Brady's is so sweet also. Like, he is so sweet. <laughs> he is so, so the sweet. Best he person is. ever. Sorry, yes, yes. Shout out to yes. Brady. <laughs> Shout out to Brady. He's my amazing husband. And he recently, two weeks ago or so, he changed his last name to Laveau. So we're both now Laveau. Oh, the so, Laveaus. Yeah, I so he took it as an, as an opportunity to start fresh too. Because... Uh, I think in life we forget that we get to start fresh each day. You are not yesterday, you're not a year ago, you're certainly not the, in my case, I was bullied growing up as a kid. I am no longer seven or 10 or 15 or 20. So if you start focusing more on how you can take everything that happens to you in a way that makes sense for you to grow, and it's not about what anybody else is going to say, it's not about imposter syndrome, it's not about pleasing anyone. It's about finding that light, that spark. And you are in the right, in the right path, and it's a journey for sure. You no, know? No, no. Is there like, like one tip or like trick that you can teach the dolls? I know we don't have a lot of time, but like every yeah. day is a new day. Is there something that you can like wake up and like words of affirmation or yes, like chanting? Yes, of course. Like, what's what's something that we could? Do, take do. his homework. Like, yes, yeah. <laughs> of course. And uh, so, and that's part of what I'll be sharing in my podcast that will be going live in a few days and we'll submit uh, the details here. What's the name of it? Uh, it's called Finding Your Magic. Finding Your Magic. And it'll find, be <laughs> it'll be linked below. Okay, good. Yeah. It'll be linked below. And Finding Your Magic is about, my husband and I have been talking about it for a long time. And it really is about that. It's about finding some practices and sharing anything that can be life enhancing that can help you propel forward and allow you to show your truest highest value in every step of the way and not just sporadically and so one of the things that I I mean there are a few things that are super important to you one of them is having a schedule it's people are like I use this I use that I'll go with the flow that can be great but when you schedule yourself and you say I'm going to go to the gym today for 9 to 11 mm. or 9 to 10 or 9 to 10 9 10 whatever you can do <laughs> yeah. you you are preparing Wait, 10 minute workout, 10 minute workout. Yeah, whatever. whatever you know and th then it happens so yeah. scheduling yourself is important not taking yourself too seriously is super important yeah. and finding you need to be finding also how it is that you're growing. So having that partner, sibling, best friend, someone that is going to be telling you, hey, this is just not a good turn for us. Mm -hmm. You need that feedback. Yeah. But also, you can't be the only one leading people. You need people that are helping you raise your standards, change your thoughts, and you need people that you're helping and everywhere in between. So uh, I think it's so important to keep a diverse group of individuals because everyone has something to give. And in terms of what you can do to to have a good a good uh, a good experience here is there's so much free content online yes. that it's I would say push yourself every time that you don't know something Google it look a video watch a video uh, take it take it farther you know for me master classes I, I instead of buying a subscription to something that could be less meaningless I bought a subscription to master class and the last oh my god it's amazing it. the last one I watched was uh, with Anna Winter oh, and I, love that one. I mean yeah. oh, incredible yeah. right she t you watched it no, watch that one, she, Serena Williams, Serena watch Williams like uh, <laughs> RuPaul has one you know awesome. yeah. and but you get a, a Mariah, Mariah. She does. oh yeah I did see that yeah, yeah. <laughs> to teach about singing, you know. 
<laughs> and when and even watching the masterclass to me, of course, that's fun because that's my thing. I'm a nerd when it comes to personal growth and development. Yes. But listening to Anna Winter walking you through how she was able to convince such a conservative place to allow to do a Met Gala where you have very, very avant-garde uh, guests, people that are certainly pushing the envelope, corsets, all of it, right? Oh, and you are yes. also exposing, you have gay, straight, you have all the letters, you have all the races, all the minorities. So it is, what she did was in, to, in, uh, help integrate all of that so well. And learning the process and the steps she took to convey that, was incredible because so uh, yeah it's really good, it yeah. good. it's interesting self-discipline yes. learning right all things that um, we sometimes run away from dolls but at the end of the day often can be so important we have so enjoyed our time with good. you today. Good, I'm glad. Learning about self-improvement and learning about Bernardo. So yes, we, we of course. Will, uh, we will see him again on some more segments. Yes, oh, I love you. I'm so happy to be here. Love you guys. I'm so happy for what you're doing. Have fun with it. Ringling dingling. I think someone called for Dr. Dose. All right, dolls, it is time for Dr. Dose, our favorite segment in which we listen to our caller who asks for advice. Dr. Dose is brought to you by Atlanta Black, uh, Atlanta Pride. Um, Atlanta Pride is much more than a parade. It is committed to diversity um, within the LGBTQ community. Check them out at atlantapride.org. Yes, honey. Yes. And our yes. doctor for yes, the day. Doctor, me again. Yes, ma'am. I love this. All right, let's listen in. <laughs> Hey, Gaily Dose dudes and dudettes and those of either and neither category. My name's Mark from Savannah. There have been a lot of changes this last year. I'm moved. I'm stressed with work. My dad's gotten ill. A close friend of mine recently died. It's a lot. And I feel like it never stops. Um, so my question is, how do you deal with stress? What do you suggest? Thanks, Joel. Ooh, ooh, child going through it. He's that stressed. is hard. Mark is Mark from Savannah, right? Yes. Well, Mark, let me tell you, you are not alone in your struggle. I think all Good of us Mark. here yes. can say there have been times in our life where we've been down and out, not knowing what was going to happen next. And another bad thing, another bit of bad news from someone I know close. But you have to remind yourself that you're not in this alone and that there is an entire village around you that I'm sure can lift you up during this time. Rely on those friends, rely on those family members that you have to give you inspiration, to like let you know that this is not over and that you'll be fine ultimately. Not to try to sound like this is all like rainbows and butterflies, but life does get hard sometimes. This is about how you process it and are you doing it the right way, you know? Yeah. What do you guys think? Um, so I think what I have kind of recently discovered is you have got to take a break before the break takes you. Oh, I like that. Yeah, somebody yes. needs to write that down. You need to take a break before <laughs> the break, break takes, takes you. you. Because yes. I think that you can get so caught up in the shuffle and, you know, you lose yourself and then you lose the kind of really important things that made you who you were. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, you're just kind of your ability to joke or be around people or you know and just take a break if you can't afford to take a break take a walk take a bike ride <laughs> go somewhere and disconnect I am going to Mexico next weekend by myself uh, for the first vacation it's I've amazing. ever taken yes. alone and it's I've done that. that's just Good. just <laughs> something that like I, I need to you, everybody needs to reset yeah reset reconfigure recalibrate refocus and then and then and then go because you're too young to burn out more one thing I taught myself and now like the darkest place in my life was like 2019 was kind of like a half of the reason why I'm in the place that I'm in is because I have certain expectations of my life and I'm not able to meet those expectations so instead of continuing to set such high expectations I have to lower the bar for myself for where I'm at in life right now I can one day get back to having these grand expectations but you have to get there first you have to walk to that place you can't just say I'm gonna I'm here right now and this is where I'm gonna end up without taking that journey you have to kind of like say this is we're gonna get here and then we're gonna get there absolutely you have to like yes. take time with yourself and give yourself the grace you deserve and that you've worked for your life isn't ending tomorrow God, God, God bless but like you have to take the time to really like give back to yourself and to understand that where you're at is where you're supposed to be and when you're going to end up is where you're supposed to be eventually you just have to take the time to get there and the timing I think is crucial like you're like you're saying and, and definitely having the ability to re remove yourself from the situation mm -hmm. so you can really have 
so you can have <laughs> some clarity. A clarity, a better approach, but also remembering that anything that you may be going through, whether it's good or bad, it's temporary. And the more you relive and relive and relive a negative a hardship moment, a, a tough moment, the more you stay in it. And sometimes making a decision, even if the decision is to say, I can't do anything about this. Mm -hmm. I have to file for bankruptcy. I will get a divorce. There are some things that you just, it's not going to be a fun situation. It is what it is. And you have to say, that's the decision. It's to say, I'm not going to obsess with it. I'm not going to go and go and go and drive myself insane. I'm going to say, this is what it is. My decision is to move forward. And something that you can do that can be incredibly beneficial is to... <laughs> every time that you have a negative thought to change that thought and negate it by acting up upon a positive thought yes. so for example you can say and this is one of many but you can say the universe is my endless supply and anything that i need is on the way something like that right you can customize it you can make it your own but if you replace each time you have a negative thought with a positive thought you start rewiring and reframing the way your mind works yes, and that. yes and if you do that enough you start getting to a place where i mean my husband and i do it and the other day he he had an aha moment and i was like oh my god this is working because you know we also try different things and some things work and some things so. don't but if you are an active participant in your development and you take it fun and you once again let go of what everybody thinks I should do how quickly someone else feels I should heal how I should heal it's about you and what may what makes sense to you what matters to you within and as you and that's one of the things that you can do. So positive affirmations work. <laughs> I think that's a well, great and, idea. And, I yeah. think that, yeah. and, 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 you, and it's not a one size fits all like you like right. you were saying. It's like you got you have to Far like, from it. you have to like figure out what works for you. Yes. If writing right. shit down works, great. If talking out loud works, great. If repositioning in the moment works, like that's amazing. But like don't don't just give up. Like you, you got you gotta like you gotta figure out how to how to move yeah, and, and also think, oh sorry go no, ahead I, was gonna say, I, think, yeah. I think what's great is this is about intentions right yeah. and really reading yourself and knowing okay are my positive my thoughts positive or not right um am i taking the time i need alone because he, he had a death i think right mm -hmm. he had a death and his, and his dad, dad is sick, is sick. so there's a work. lot there it's a lot my, yeah. my my other thing to add to this pile would be simply like do the next best thing <laughs> And just keep doing that. Like, I feel like sometimes you can be overwhelmed if it's then to go take a break and then maybe get that piece for work done. And then just take like every day, just make it simple. Some days you don't have to be achieving everything and working like amazing to just survive and do it well is an achievement. Like that's a good day. Yeah. You know, sometimes just getting through the things that you need to do and doing them the best you can is a reason to celebrate. And, and then you do them again and and those little celebrations are good. So that's my little. <laughs> and Oprah Winfrey always, you know, I know you guys talk about Oprah with before, but Oprah Winfrey always talks about focusing on the right next move. Yes. And right. if you stop seeing, uh, you know, how to get to the top of the mountain and, you know, focus on what you can do today, what are your actions? What actions can you take today mm -hmm. to make that step forward? Yes. To really make change happen? you will see it happen because as you become more positive and you start shifting the way you think uh, that those tough moments will not become 24 hours a day they might become first 23 hours and 20 then 10 then 5 then hopefully one hour and before you know it it's not going to be something that you're replaying to yourself uh, all day long but there's also a time and space to be sad mm -hmm. to feel those emotions and to say what is this here to teach me what can yeah. i grow you know yeah. how can what i grow this moment yeah it's cry it's, it's okay yeah you cry you go deep you say 
hey, what can I learn from it? Yeah, it's not. Yes. <laughs> like you, yes. Well, I guess to wrap us out as the doctor this week, I would say take an assessment, like pause right now where you're at listening to this, so you're getting our advice and say, this is why I'm upset. This is how we've ended up here. And then say, how am I going to move on from this? And then take the steps necessary to move on. A lot of times we get a plan and we map everything out and then we move on from it. And we forget to actually implement the plan. And then check back in on yourself and say like, write a note, today to date is April 20th. Write a note and say on May 20th, where I'm at, on June 20th, where I'm at. And if you haven't gotten there, don't be upset about it. Then change the goal. The goal post can move and you'll get to where you need to be. And call us back if you need anything else, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Dose. Love it. Green light, red light, pow. It's gays that play. All right, dolls. We are here for another edition of Gays That Play. Um, also, if you're interested in sponsoring this segment, please reach out to us at marketing at thegetitos.com to make it happen. All right. Are y'all ready to play? Let's ready. Do it. All right. So this week we're bringing you another game of either or. This time it's going to be different activities that people deem as fun. Which one you like doing more? Which one you don't like doing? So on and so forth. You get the point. So let's start. <laughs> okay. The first one is going to be beach trip or mountain trip. Beach Beach for sure. Beach same. I like a good mountain trip, like cabin <laughs> woods. That's awesome too, though. We'll see, like you know, like I, I, the the farm. I did twenty years in the fucking woods. How about a meat mountain by the beach? <laughs> I'm gonna grow up the fucking. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, that's gonna be no Vancouver. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next, a dinner party or a cocktail reception. Dinner, dinner, party. dinner party, yeah. I feel like I'm the weird one. I got to reception. Really? I want to get to know people. <laughs> bounce around with a little champagne in your hand. Just stop at that table. Good to see you. Stop at that table. Because <laughs> <laughs> once a dinner party gets awkward, it's just awkward. Like, y'all are stuck. <laughs> it's like, That's nice, too, though. I mean. Yeah. As long as, I guess as long as everyone's enjoyable. Uh, if, I have, if I throw a dinner party, I make every hour or every 30 minutes, I make people stand up and switch seats. Really? I mean, really? <laughs> That's what Martha Stewart says to do. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with the jail. Okay. So. Wow, that's a lot of. Uh, <laughs> so, shopping excursion or inventory of your current closet? Shopping excursion, duh. Ooh, yeah, so that's a tough one. I like the inventory. I like, I like shopping. To, I like your own take, clothes? Like to take it, like, and then appreciate what you have and then just buy the few things you want. No. That's a dad for you, okay? Every season, every <laughs> I season, I go on, like, a big shopping excursion. I'm like, I want this look for that. I want mm-hmm. this piece. Let's mix it up some. Because, like, you know, like, you can, like, you get so bored of wearing the same thing all the time. Yeah, yeah. make room for more stuff. Or you get to the point where you, like, hate everything that you own. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, you've worn it too many times or you've yes. photographed in it. I get it. So, next one. A night in or a night out? Mm. Night out. I'm tired of sitting inside the house. <laughs> I've been good for way too long. What about y'all? Uh, sometimes a night in is all I need, but I, I'm an extrovert. I love socializing and being out. For sure. But lately, I've been having a lot more fun with nights in, enjoying a hot tub and just having chilling. Having over. Like, that's yeah, so just yeah. reconnecting. Just, I'm a pro with that. Yeah. In the, I'm weird. In the summer, I like a night in because it's just hot outside. I'm going to be indoors. Yeah. In the winter, I party like there's no tomorrow. I love it. You really do. <laughs> yeah. I like both, but I'm with Bernardo, the extroversions, and I always pull me out. But yes. Oh, yes. Like, good night. Is Next one. Saving money for later or splurging now? Splurging now. <laughs> suck it. I am splurging now. <laughs> But also I, saving. I choose both. Yeah. I don't want to choose. You I save and I also spend. Yeah. So you gotta live a little. So it's, yeah, you have to live a little. But it's. I feel like now I just buy things that I love yes. instead of buying everything. It makes so, a difference. You yeah. appreciate the items you have yeah. more. But I love so much. Oh, well. That's the only problem. I'm like, I love it all. I am a former shopaholic, so I understand <laughs> very well. I can't wait to be informed. Yes. <laughs> All right. Sunday fun day or Friday night out? Sunday fun day. Oh, Sunday fun day. Oh, Sunday yeah. Fun day. Same. Sunday because I like good. to wrap it like you can drink and go hard that long and still somehow be in bed by 930. It's crazy. <laughs> I do love that because like the night is over so quickly. And you don't feel like you're missing anything. Yeah. Oh. I mean, at 930 you're in bed. It's like, that's the best. I wish Fridays were like that. I wish Fridays didn't start at night. It's the perfect church time. Yes. Oh, without... Fine without making you feel bad. You just mm-hmm. have fun, go to the park, enjoy your friends, be gay all the way. <laughs> be gay all the way, I need yeah. all the shirt. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I guess for me, it just depends, because sometimes that Sunday Monday turns into actual church, and so you're hanging out at Sister Louise's and you're 
Oh, yeah. the place. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, you're at in Gavishtown. Oh, yeah. You're, you're at Future. Yeah, you're just, somehow yeah. turns it rolls into Monday and you got yeah, it's just saying. It's all right. Yeah. Come on, party animal. Well, you gotta, you gotta have fun. <laughs> all right. We have two more left. Blind date or Tinder match? I say blind date. It's fun. I've done both and neither were very great. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say blind date though, because it's an adventure. Yeah, you don't know what you're gonna get. Oh, God, that that'd be hard. I mean, I don't know if uh, blind dates have never worked for me, but um, yeah, tender match. I think I would say on that one if I had you to. Preview it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> do a research a little. Yeah. What's the last thing? I'm gonna go with blind date. Who are you? I'm blind gonna go with blind date. Oh, how much did you go on recently? I did. I went on two blind dates. Oh my gosh. How'd you like them, girl? Yeah, they were good. They were fine. Did you make friends? No. <laughs> did they bring their service dogs? <laughs> oh, oh service my dogs god. On blind date? No. Because they're blind. Oh, uh, <laughs> shut up. Oh, I'm All right. <laughs> the last one is house music or pop divas? Pop divas. Oh. I like house music with pop vocals. Like yes, the there we go. I like that. I'm I, li- I like both. There's a time and a place for both. Oh, but place. yeah, but to chill, I definitely like house music. Okay. So house music can be kind yeah. of vibe, like a vibe, kind of like who cool. I'm like relaxing, yeah. you know? Yeah, round into a <laughs> panic attack. <laughs> well, it, it just depends. So circuit music and house music are usually different things. So I'll give you that. Yeah, All yeah, right. Pop well. <laughs> That was another edition of Gay Set Play here at the Gayly Dose. Tune back in next week for another round. Ciao. Dolls everywhere unite. It's the call to Kiki. All right, dolls, it's our call to Kiki. Call to Kiki is brought to you by Atlanta Black Pride. They're committed to diversity and our LGBTQ community, but also creating a special place for those who are black and gay. Check them out at atlantablackpride.org. Yes, honey, it's time to round it up, honey. It's time to have the fuller phone back at it again with my call to Kiki. You know, this week, I'm really gonna take tell you to like, create like a life, let me think what it was, because you just can get lost with stuff right, right, in right. the brain. Get a life group town hall with your friends. Come together and all like your closest four, let's say, and you all like jot down where you're at in life right now. Like, where am I at? And then take a step back and say, what did I want to be at this point in my life? And for the things that you haven't gotten to yet, fuck those expectations, move those out of the way and create new goals for yourself. Don't bog yourself down in where you weren't and where you haven't gotten yet. If you haven't gotten, you haven't gotten it for a reason, stop putting energy into something that has died. And it's time for you to start this new beginning and this new chapter in your life and go somewhere else. Pivot where necessary and make the most of it because you're beautiful. Oh, I love that. That's so good advice for spring. Yeah, good advice for springtime with your doll. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. All of that. Right. Well, thank you so much for being yes, with us, Bernardo. Of it's course. been fantastic. Thank you, guys. I love all of you. It's been amazing being yes, here. It's and been more than a pleasure. I'm so happy that Absolutely. you're doing this. So, so uh, Can you tell the dolls a little bit more how to get a hold of you, how to learn more about you? Yeah. Because you've got some, so many exciting things going on your businesses and, sure. and your podcasts. Yes, of course. So for coaching, my website is lubocoaching.com it will be below I guess I believe <laughs> uh, so it's lubocoaching.com for my website my Instagram is Bernardo Lubo at Bernardo Lubo uh, I, I actually I should say my handle uh, my handle uh, on Instagram is at Bernardo Lubo what is it? <laughs> my name uh, uh, I'm Bernardo Lubo uh, and uh, my podcast Finding Your Magic will be live next week and the link will be here below yeah so yeah. yes so yes. congratulations so excited to see what you do for yes. these next years as you uh, build continue to evolve into, thank right. you your eye just twitch when your bill continues <laughs> I love it. Well, dolls, it's always such a pleasure. We love you. We remind you to love yourself, love others, and don't forget to smile. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.